Bambi Thug, the Irish Eurovision artist, is anti-Semitic. I don't even care anymore. Them. The thing that makes us as contestants, the community behind it, the love and the power and the support of all of us is what is making change. And the world has spoken. The queers are coming. Non-binary is for those of you who don't know, once upon a time, the Eurovision was an event that you would watch with your family and your friends in your living room, right at your home. I mean, it is an international song competition in Europe. Talented singers from all across the world come together and compete against one another. It's really no different than the Olympics where all of these athletes from across the world come together, compete against one another until the champion country wins. The best dancers on the competition so you think you can dance come together, compete against one another until the best dancer wins. America's Got Talent, Britain's Got Talent, or what have you. And you and I both know that forever, these shows have been kid-friendly. They're not even rated PG-13. I mean, children watch the highlights of the viral moments on TikTok, of really cool dancing trends or beautiful singing performances. And what do these competitions do for people? They bring joy, they bring happiness, togetherness, fun, competition, and love. There are winners and there are losers, but you have to give it all that you've got and do your very best. So, is that what Eurovision was this year? Forget your politics just for one moment. Forget your stance on the situation right now between Israel and Palestine. It is simply ridiculous to blame a 20-year-old woman for being directly associated with the geopolitical landscape of the Middle East that we have right now. Between Jews, anti-Jews, Israel, and Palestine. Eden went to the Eurovision for the same reasons that it is supposed to exist. For fun, for happiness, togetherness, competitiveness, and to win. Eden did not have any sort of agenda to create a boycott of any kind, and she literally didn't. Eden went to the competition to represent Israel, her home country, and to compete against other singers from across the world. She didn't boo other participants. She didn't encourage her fans or her followers to boycott other singers. She did not use her platform to instigate hate or discrimination or singling out any other participant simply because where they are from, and then defining them guilty by association. The outrageous boos against Eden in the Eurovision competition are boos coming from overly emotional and underly informed individuals calling this entire geopolitical situation between Israel and Palestine an occupation where Israel is just killing innocent Palestinians. Yes, being booed on stage during a live performance is something that occurs. This is a real phenomenon where haters will be haters. But in masses like this, this is abnormal behavior. And it gets a little bit more abnormal, aggressively abnormal. Edin was escorted around with 20 armed agents her entire time after she arrived for the Eurovision competition. In Sweden, security told her not to leave her hotel room because of security threats outside. Not Iraq, not Lebanon, not Syria, but Sweden because of mobs waiting for Edin outside of her hotel room. She was moved to the hotel, to the Eurovision venue by over 100 police officers like a military convoy. The venue made sure that Edin's dressing room was all the way in the back separated from everyone else. Edin then gets on stage and just gets booed and she qualifies hitting incredible numbers. And then during her press conference, Greece's singer Marina Sati decides to do the unthinkable and be more childish than any one of us could have imagined. Very happy. Thank you. How do you feel uh, after reaching the final when the situation in Israel, uh, you know how it is? 
Um, well, I feel I'm so overwhelmed with emotions. It's truly such an honor to be here on stage. Wait, wait. I'm genuinely beginning to think that a lot of this childlike behavior comes from a place of envy. I mean, I guess the silent majority said it all, no? One of your views on this Israel-Hamas Israel war should surely be self-evident. Uh, that it's ridiculous to blame it on a 20-year-old woman simply trying to perform at a song contest. And to the palpable fury of those who campaigned against her, it spectacularly backfired. Once votes from the viewing public across Europe and the world were added to the total, Israel surged up leaderboard. More countries gave Israel the maximum 12 points from public votes than any other entry. And the song has now reached number seven in the entire world on iTunes. Listen, results are results. Numbers do not lie. We all know how the judges felt. We all know how the gatekeepers felt. We all know for sure how some of these other contestants felt. Like Bambi Thug, the devil non-binary worshiper who is known for making music about breakups, witchcraft, and drug addiction. And you know what? It is really easy to hate Jewish people. It's the cool thing to hate Jewish people in 2024. It's the trending boycott of 2024, even in America. Deal about our commencement speaker? <laughs> I mean, Duke University graduation ceremony. Not a political event, literally absolutely nothing to do with Israel. Students graduating walked out of their own commencement speech ceremony simply because Jerry Seinfeld is a Jewish individual. The incidents at Eurovision with Eden Golan having instrumental amounts of security around her 24 seven, the boycotts outside of her hotel room, people attempting to get Israel out of the Eurovision, the booze on stage and all of these students at Duke University walking out of their own commencement speech. We all heard about all of this because we follow mainstream media. And the truth is, is that we were all shocked and we still are at how normalized anti-Semitism is in America post October 7th. Don't tell me that you don't think it's normalized. People used to hide by saying that they are not against Jewish people, but that they are against Israeli policies. But now post October 7th, that mask is off. And these same individuals are hating against Jewish people only because they are Jewish. And the most fascinating part about what happened at Duke University is Jerry Seinfeld hasn't even said anything. He's a comedian, he's American, and he doesn't have a deep connection to Israel aside from the fact that he is Jewish. Look, the final results of the Eurovision is proof that despite loud idiots we hear on the streets outside of these venues or college students in the United States of America, there are normal sane people in the world that do not agree with a lot of this BS. They don't want anything to do with these boycotts, nor do they necessarily agree with them in the first place. Despite the woke mob just trying to be vocal, the rest of Europe, the silent majority, did their very best at shutting them up. And to be honest, this does give a little bit of hope that not everything is actually lost. It might seem like based on everything that you see to you and I or other people that everything is a huge PR nightmare for Israel. But if you zoom out just a tiny bit, things aren't as bad as they seem. In fact, people back at their homes who don't march or scream, they understand what is going on. And this entire episode at the Eurovision provided a slight feel good moment. And you wanna know the truth? The only person with a real genuine smile, which is coming from a very good place, is Edin Golan. She is proud, she is happy, and she knows the truth. And Israel and Edin Golan are the winners.